Good morning and welcome to this week's Encompass Live. Um, this week's episode of Encompass Live. Hi, I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of things um, that a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available on our website for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So uh, please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have at Encompass Live. Um, I'm assuming most people watching this will be from Nebraska, but I say this every time anyways. Um, if you're not from Nebraska and you're watching this, um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. In other states, that would be your state library, potentially. So we provide services and resources and training and grants and all sorts of things to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we have guest speakers that come into the show sometimes, but we also have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations for us. And that is what we have today. Today, it is part two of our Meet the NLC, um, Meet the Nebraska Library Commission sessions. Last week, we did part one. Uh, and with um, half of our departments, I guess, interestingly, it works out that there's four and we've got like eight general areas of, uh, here at the commission. So uh, last week you met um, Rod Wagner, the um, library commission director, uh, Vern Bias, the uh, computer services, Lisa Kelly, Information Services, and Mary Sauer, Government Information Services. Uh, and today we have a whole new group here, and I'm going to be one of the speakers today. Um, and I'll um, we'll do introductions as we get to each um, each of our sections, I think. Uh, and the reason we're doing these uh, Meet the NLC sessions, uh, there's a couple of reasons that we're coming up with this. In the last year or so, there have been quite a few sessions um, done at conferences or other meetings or events um, asking us from the commission, can you come and talk about what you all do there? And the commission's been around for 100 and something years that I join at. Is it 120? It's somewhere around. Over 100, 120. yeah, we had our 125, anyway. Um, but there's still some people that don't know everything we do here. Um, a new staff, um, we do new things here. So it seemed to be a, an ongoing thing with more repeatedly last year than any other pre previous recent years. So I said, oh, well, we should maybe do something around here. Um, and also, uh, the, um, this show, Encompass Live, we premiered in January 2009 with Meet the NLC Part 1 and Part 2. That was we did as we started off the show. Um, so as of last year, last year was our 15th year. We have 15 years of Encompass Live. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and we have over 700 recordings on our website. All of our recordings are out there. If you ever want to go back and see the original one of this, these Go for it. <laughs> uh, don't pay attention to anything we said in those because that is 15 years old information, but um, it's still out there. So I thought as I mean, 15 is a nice round number, start of our 16th year, we're doing now uh, Meet the NLC Sessions Part 1 and Part 2. So today we are going to, and as I said, we started last week, the recording for the recording for last week's show is already up, so you can watch that first part already, and today's recording will be up um, by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, so we're going to talk about what what is the Library Commission. You learned more about what is the Library Commission last week, actually. We're not going to go over that again. Um, so watch last week's for Rod's introduction to the Commission in general. Um, but we want to want to talk about who we are and the kind of things we do here. And first up is actually me. Um, I'm right here, but I've got uh, a uh, picture up there on the slides. Um, these slides will also be available um, afterwards with the show recording as well. So um, some of us have a lot of links on there or screenshots and whatnot to things. Don't worry about trying to scribble all that down or anything. Um, when the, recordings, the recording goes up, we will uh, um, give you access to these slides as well. And I believe 
I did it right, all the links in here are hot links. So when you look at your slides, you can click on all of these and pop to um, whatever pages we're talking about. So I am the library De director of library development or library development services department here at the library commission. And we do lots of things in support of libraries. Uh, basically, um, my job, and actually the whole commission's job is to help librarians do their jobs, help them, you know, we don't, some of us work directly with the public. Some of us work more with the librarians. So we kind of help on from both sides. Um, and that URL there, that link there that I put up is like a general list of all the things that are possibly even in any way, shape or form related to library development. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to highlight a few of them uh, today. Um, first, I want to introduce you to uh, the staff in Library um, Development Services, uh, Sally Snyder, who has been the commission for a long, long time. Many of you probably know her. She's our coordinator of Children and Young Adult Library Services. Anything youth and kids related, she's your um, person to talk to. Uh, Holly Duggan is our continuing education coordinator. So anything with um, earning CE, doing basic skills classes, uh, professional development, she would be the person to talk to for that. Uh, newest person added to our department just last this month last month yeah last month december, december. december. yeah uh editorial department not as the commission he's been the commission for a year already andrew uh sherm sherman andrew sherman goes by sherm um he's a library technology support specialist and he uh, just recently was promoted to that position and then moved over to library development because he works um, a lot more closely with me actually on things um e-ray and technology and broadband broadband related, and it made more sense for him to be in my department. So he's the newest member of um, library development. And then Mary Geibel, our office specialist who keeps us all on track, and keeps us everything off. Uh, you, you also work with her with um, um, earning CE credits and uh, setting, laying out certificates and all those kinds of things. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is accreditation and certifications. And uh, there are lots of previous, there are workshops on this and um, other previous Encompass slides get a lot more in depth into this. So I'm going to go, this is going to be like a one minute overview. Um, here in, in Nebraska, we do have a public library um, accreditation program and we have librarian and library board certification programs. Um, my predecessor, Richard Miller, used to get said he would get confused about which was which, what's accreditation, what's certification. And he came up with this way of him to remember that people are certifiable, but buildings are not. So people get certifications, your library gets accreditation. Um, there's the links to each of the main pages for all of those. Um, as I said, there's major, um, there's um, full workshops about them. Um, the accreditation process is a way for libraries to um, earn, um, be able to, you know, promote that they've um, gone through all this work and um, come up with lots of services that meet criteria that we have um, set up here at the, um, through the library commission. Um, the process starts in July, so July 1st, so this spring. Um, if anyone is up for accreditation, you'll hear from me. Um, it's a five-year, your accreditation is good for five years, so you only hear from us every five years to do it. Um, you do need to do a community needs response plan, which is kind of like a um, um, strategic plan, but not. It's just focused on the library. Um, in order to be accredited, both your library director has to be certified and your library board has to be certified. So that's why the information out up there about that. Um, I have to earn a certain number of hours of continuing education credits and um, in some cases do some coursework to do either one of those. Uh, for both your library directors, we have a live public library director's guidebook that Holly Duggan and other staff here has put together. A really, really good resource. I highly recommend to every library director and look at that. It's basically everything you need to know about being a director, a public library director. And we have a similar thing for our library boards, uh, the Latin Nebraska Library Board Manual. So um, with that, um, anything your library boards need to know about how to be a board member. And there are links to that on each of those, uh, the certification pages. So, um, but those things are always grouped together on our website because in order to be accredited, you have to have both those certifications along with a bunch of other uh, criteria. Um, in order, uh, something else that we offer is our basic skills classes. This is something that Holly does, Holly Duggan. Uh, some librarians and um, um, get um, degrees from higher, you know, college degrees, higher, higher education, um, masters in library science. Um, degrees, but not everyone does. And um, we know there's many librarians who just can't do that. They don't have the time, money um, to do it, and they just don't even they want to. Working part-time as a library director in a small library in Nebraska, probably not something you're thinking about. 
but you do need to keep up with how to do your job and to earn credits to become certified if you want your library to become accredited. And we offer these free basic skills courses. Um, they cost nothing, they're all done online. There's a schedule throughout the year of when you take each of the classes, most of them. Um, and then if you do all of these classes in a three year period or three years to do this work, you earn your certification. So you don't do this all in one year. That would be a lot. Don't do it in all in one year. <laughs> um, there are six required courses you have to take. Um, and the schedule is up on the on Basic Skills website right now if you want to see when all these courses are happening throughout the year. Except, as you can see, we've got a few that we're starting to, um, Holly started to get some of them to be more self-paced. Um, our communication class you can take at any time you want to now. It's not even at any certain time of year. Just whenever you want to jump in on that one, you can do it. Our Introduction to Cataloging class is also self-paced. It runs the full month of April, um, but you just do it whenever you want to during that month. Most of our other classes last two weeks and they're during a certain time period, and you have to do it during that two weeks time period with instructors that work with you on those. So in order to earn your certification, you have to take all six of these classes, and then you have to pick seven out of these 10 to do your electives. Now, doing all of this is only if you want to earn your certification. You are welcome. It is free to any library staff person, actually any um, Nebraska citizen who might just be interested in being a librarian or working in a library. You can take any of these courses anytime you want to. It does not have to be for the purpose of earning certification. It can be just because I'm a new um, children's youth librarian. I need to learn a little bit more about it. I'm just going to pop in and take that one course, the Library Services Children Youth Session. Um, and all these classes are taught um, by the National Library Commission staff or our regional library system directors. Uh, other continuing education opportunities are out there as well if you need to earn CE credits for your certification or just if you want to learn something, you want to keep up with what you're doing. Um, this show can help us live. Y'all gonna earn uh, an hour of CE for watching this and you can earn CE, continuing education credits, for watching all of our recordings too. Um, United for Libraries, this is um, through the American Library Association, is for uh, trustees, library boards, foundations. The Nebraska Library Commission pays for a, an account for all libraries in the state to have access to the resources in there. So if you have any boards that need training, there's a lot of trustee courses and things in there, um, they need to earn CE or just learn how to do their jobs as board members, that is the place to send them to. Um, web Junction is also something that we pay uh, for to help keep it running. Free resources, free webinars, free trainings in there that can help you earn CE. These are just a selected things. There's lots of things out there. Um, and then if you're wondering what, how you were doing in your CE, how many um, for either your library director, your library staff, or your boards, you can log into an, um, your own account with us and see where, you're, where you are in CE, how many you've earned, how many you need, if you're working for certification, and just to see what you've done. Um, there's links to the CE records for the librarian and library boards on those main pages for both of those certifications. Something else we offer through uh, library development is our grants. All of our grant programs are done through library development. So youth grants for excellence, CEN training grants, library improvement grants, which is Federal Library Service and Technology Act money, and internship grants. Um, that's the main page for grants. Right now, the, um, they're not open. Uh, they're done the year before for the upcoming year. So the 2024 grants were already um, when it's applied to. And you should be sometime this month hearing from all of us about um, if you've been approved and receiving your whatever um, grants you'll get for 2024. So look in the fall is for when we open these up again. Um, the CE and training ones, however, they are done in two batches. In March, I believe, there'll be a second um, round opening for those for anything you're going to be attending in the second half, uh, might be doing the second half of 2024, we break that one up. So if you need funding for anything, look at our grant program that we have here. Uh, we also do a lot of things, so a lot of things in youth and children, um, children's and young adult services, a summer reading program. Uh, the theme for this year is Adventure Begins at Your Library. Um, all libraries should have already received the manual or a USB that is the manual to purchase anything you need for your summer reading if you're going to be going with that theme. Um, she does a best new children's and teen books every year. So similar to the One Book, One Nebraska, we do one book. Uh, our, oh no, Best New Children and Teens books, that's her list. Sorry, I jumped ahead. <laughs> that's her list of new book books from the last year. Um, she does here on Encompass Live. She sometimes does it at a conference, an LA conference, the Russell Library Association conference. She's done the children's one already for this year, and the teen one is actually in two weeks. 
So her list of all of her books that she's come across are on that handouts page. And then she has her one book for Nebraska kids and teens um, every year, like um, where um, you can um, have um, children or teens read the same book and discuss it. And the titles for 2024, Parachute Kids by Betty Tang and Between the Lines for Teens by Nikki Grimes. Um, the information is up there for out there for those. Another thing I do here is E-Rate. E-Rate is federal funding um, for public libraries. All Nebraska libraries are eligible for it. Um, you can get discounts on your monthly internet costs and any equipment you need to purchase to make that internet work. Um, right now, um, applying for the 2024 year is open. Now is the time to do it. I did training. If you go to that work, uh, our E-Rate website there, there's a full workshop and um, slides on how to do it. And if you do need any help, call me, email me. That's what I'm here for. I'm the state E-Rate coordinator for public libraries for E-Rate. And um, I can hand help you through the whole process. So if you need a discount on, if you think you need a discount on internet or you need to bump up to fiber and want a discount, this is a program that can help you do that. I think this is a nice slide. Um, and technology. Um, now that we have Sherm in our department, this is the kind of thing we do through a lot of development. One big thing he has done is set up DNS filter. Um, filtering many libraries need you must be you must filter have some sort of filtering blocking um, inappropriate things on the internet in order to receive any sort of federal funding. That would be E-rate funding and that would be LSTA grant funding. Um, and any other federal funding you receive. Here in, at the Library Commission now, we have a program where we will provide a DNS filter, a certain type of filter for you for free. No cost to your library, Sherm will reach out to you, he will work with you, he'll get installed on your computer, on your network, whatever you need, and we monitor it and take care of it um, for you. So if you never knew what to do with the filter, it was too much to figure out, um, you couldn't afford it, go to that website, free for all public libraries in the state of Nebraska can get filtering and we will maintain that for you. Also, if you're interested in updating your broadband or your technology or um, what's going on, how do I keep my computer secure? He's the guy to talk to. Um, he's done a couple of income slides for us about them, but he will come to your library and do a tech review. He will work with you over the phone. I'm just talking to you about what do I need to make things work better and work faster, technology related at my library. It's me. I'm just using the arrow keys to the sign order. Yeah, we didn't think about it. <laughs> Hi, my name's Tessa Timberley, and you might have known me as Tessa Terry. I have a new last name, so that's something I'm getting used to. <laughs> um, so I am the communications coordinator, and I handle our communications, public information, all that great stuff. Um, some of the things that I work on in my department, I handle all the commission's social media, um, news releases, the annual and biannual reports. Nebraska Center for the Book is something that I work on quite often. Um, any graphics or photography that come out of the commission usually go through me, and then programming collection promotions. So our social media, our three main ones that we do pretty much everything on that we post to our, our Facebook account, which we have several Facebook accounts for different things. Like we have an Encompass account. Right. We yeah. have a Center for the Book Facebook page, a One Book, One Nebraska Facebook page. Um, and then I think Librarians Learning Together page. But our main one is the Nebraska Library Commission Facebook page where we post everything that we're doing. If we have um, a basic skills class coming up, we post about it. Um, it does, you know, new books on BARD. We kind of touch all departments. If they have something they're offering to librarians or the public, we put it on our Facebook and social media. Um, we have an Instagram account and that's nlc.social. And then we also have a Twitter account at nlc underscore news. So those are our main ones. And I would really encourage you, if you are a library, if you have accounts on these social media pages, or if you're a librarian with accounts on these, or a media specialist in a school, to follow us. We usually follow you back just so we can see what libraries are doing across the state. Um, we follow lots of out-of-state libraries as well, just because we we like to see what people are doing and. Yeah, learn from them as well. So or out of state um state libraries or oh, state yeah. library associations. You yep. know, try and just to keep up to yeah. date with 
where people are at and what they're doing in their libraries so we can all be connected in that way. And these are just shots of our pages if you wanted to look for them on your social media accounts. One of the big things I handle is our annual report. Um, every year we put out a report. One year it will be an annual report that covers one fiscal year, which is July through June. And the next year we'll do a biannual, a biannual report, which covers two fiscal years, usually the year before and then the previous year, the current year. And this is a really great way to stay up to date with just an overall picture of what the commission's doing. It looks at what projects we funded. It looks at the databases that we have. There are articles from every single department at NLC. Um, our department heads write them and update them. So they're, they're about what's happening at the commission that fiscal year, any new programs we've initiated or how current programs are going. So if you're interested in the commission as a whole and you just want to get an idea of what's going on, that would be a great place to start. Mm -hmm. The other program that I have um, probably the biggest hand in outside of Nebraska Library Commission is our Nebraska Center for the Book. It is a nonprofit that's housed here at the commission and they have a lot of great programs. I'm their point person here at the commission. So we handle their website and we update that for them. And I do a lot of the behind the scenes work for their programming. So the NCB newsletter, One Book One Nebraska, letters about literature, the Nebraska Book Festival, Nebraska Book Awards, and the Celebration of Nebraska Books all come through the commission and we have a hand in them and help organize them and work with the board for the Nebraska Center for the Book. Oh. Then we're into talking book stuff. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any questions about the communications department, how we work, um, we do a lot of programming just with all the department heads. So things like promotions for Encompass Live, Meet the Presenter. We do the Book Face Friday post. Amy Owens and I do that every week. So trying to find different ways to look at our collections and promote those books to you. We do a new books on Bard post, looking at the books that Gabe and his department have uploaded and have ready for their department. We do a Nebraska Memories Throwback Thursday post every week to keep people updated on what's going on with those. So just lots of different, something going on. yeah, there's always something going on, trying to highlight the different programs that we have so that you guys know about them is pretty much our goal. So I'll hand it over to Gabe. Okay, I'm Gabe Kramer. I'm the director of the Talking Book and Parole Service. You can see that's our staff right there. We're currently hiring for a reader's advisor if any of you want to apply. Um, but we've got our own studios that we'll talk about in a bit. We record our own books. But the Talking Book and Braille Service is the state library for the blind and visually impaired and physically handicapped of Nebraska. It's easy to sign up. You can just go to our website. There's the link. If you are an individual, if you are a facility, which would be like a nursing home or a school, you may sign up for our service. Most importantly, it must be signed by what we call a certifying authority. So not just anyone can sign up for our service. You have to qualify. You have to be blind. You have to be visually impaired. You have to have a reading disability of some sort. And it must be signed by a medical professional, social worker, teacher, et cetera. Um, librarians are a little tricky. Um, we prefer a librarian to either be someone that has their MLIS degree or is at the very least the director of the local public library, um, not just someone that works at the library. The delivery of our products, is, we use the United States Postal Service, all of our machines, the cartridges, braille, uh, newsletters coming and going from the patrons, it's all free. No postage is necessary. And then our products offered, I've brought some things to show and tell here. We have our digital talking book machine. 
which looks like so. We have our cartridges. They're about the size of a credit card. Um, they're just glorified USB drives is all they are. We duplicate our cartridges in-house via what we call duplication on demand. We can customize your books any way you want them. Um, if you want to read the entire Harry Potter series, we can put it in order, books one through seven. Um, there's no waiting for books. So if you use Overdrive, for example, um, there may be a limited amount of a certain title that you want. We have an infinite number of copies of books. So if all 2,600 of our patrons want to read the same book at the same time, they can. We also have Bard and our Bard mobile app. That is for people that don't want to use the cartridges sent to their house. They can just use their phone. Um, I would say about 90% of the collection is available via Bard. So you pretty much never run out of books if you want to go that way. We have our Braille e-reader. This is new. This has only been out for about a year. Um, it is electronic Braille. So you can download a book uh, with a Braille file and you upload it to this device. And as you read along, the Braille just changes. And then we also have print Braille, uh, children's Braille we have in-house and our adult Braille um, we co-opt with the state of Utah. So all of your adult Braille needs would actually come from Utah, not from Nebraska. They order it through us. They order it through it us. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. So our readers advisors, again, we are hiring right now <laughs> if you want to apply. Um, they're your first line of contact. They will help you out with everything that you could possibly need, whether that's filling out an application, setting up service, selecting books. Maybe it's trying to find that that hard to find book. You know, you heard about a book on a radio or television program, but you know, you, you don't know the title, but maybe you knew the author. Ask. They're, they're very good at knowing those things. Um, and just general questions about the program. Again, we have our own in-house recording studios. We record both books and magazines. And I should mention something that's not on there. We have about 25 volunteers that come in and narrate all of our books and magazines. Um, they give us anywhere from 90 minutes to four hours a week. Our magazines, we have 19 titles, local, regional interest. The magazines listed there, pretty much anything with uh, the word Nebraska in the title we record, plus uh, Taste of Home, Midwest Living, Mother Earth News, things of more regional interest. Our books, um, our collection development policy for books is books by local authors, books about Nebraska, books about the Great Plains, and then we always record the one book, one Nebraska. Um, this year's One Book, One Nebraska, Dancing with the Octopus, we're hoping to have finished here in about a month. And there is our contact information. Phone number, we do have an 800 number for those um, outside of the Lincoln area. Email and our website. And next up is Deborah. <coughs> And I'll apologize in advance if I have to clear my throat sort of regularly. Sorry about that. But um, <clears throat> my name is Deborah Dragos, and I'm the director of the Technology and Access Services Department. And the rest of the people who are related to my department are up here: Alana Nabotny, Susan Nisley, Amanda Sweet, our our cataloging position is currently open, but we it closed the application um, uh, process closed on Friday. So we are currently reviewing applications. So hopefully we'll find uh, someone here soon to fill that position. And then Jennifer Rampey uh, rounds out our department. She helps so much with a lot of our paperwork and et cetera, all the invoicing. In our department, we work a lot with um, products and services that 
the Library Commission actually shares or provides to libraries, and we work with um, groups to purchase items, getting them discounts and, and things of that nature. The first um, service that I want to talk about today is Nebraska Access. This particular page is for the general public. Lisa and Mary may have talked a little bit about some of the services that are provided um, from this main Nebraska Access page last week, the website selected by librarians and the state agency publications. Today, I'm going to talk about the databases uh, for Nebraskans, um, which was the, act the original <laughs> Nebraska Access portion, and then also Nebraska Memories. But we'll start with the databases for Nebraskans. These are databases that the Library Commission purchases for all Nebraska residents. This is the main access page, and we currently provide three um, different portals. As you can see here, there is an option for all Nebraska Access databases, high school databases, and then elementary and middle school databases. So we provide passwords to all libraries. We also provide IP access um, or IP recognition if that's an option for a particular school or public library. And then they can choose which of the um, database selections is most appropriate for their particular patrons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once you enter the portal, um, once a patron enters a portal, they can find a list of all the different databases that are available. We do offer, um, I don't have the entire list here for you, but we offer biographical databases, um, a small business database, a consumer health database, a legal database, genealogy database, um, and some other more academic level databases, as well as children's databases. On the Nebraska Library Commission website, we have um, more uh, uh, resources that are aimed at the librarians. So for Nebraska Access on our Library Commission page, we do offer what we call the Librarian's Toolbox. And here you can get information about how to link and authenticate your patrons to databases. You can get marketing materials. You can get little business card or templates to make little business cards to hand out passwords to your patrons if you would like so that they could use these resources from home. We also offer um, group discounts for a number of different products and services so that libraries um, can uh, get a lower cost, hopefully. So we have several different, three different pages. Our first one is for databases and e-resources. So any library that's interested in purchasing any of the databases that are listed on this page, um, will actually uh, sign up for that product through the Library Commission. Susan Nisley uh, heads this up. And then you're invoiced through the Library Commission. So you do not have to then, um, you, number one, you get a discount. And number two, you only pay the Library Commission. You do not have to pay each of the separate vendors. In so addition- how many I'm looking here on this. This is just a screenshot of the beginning, the A's right. and D's. There's, Do you know how many? I mean, uh, this has got to be a huge couple list. hundred. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It, it's quite a lengthy list. Yeah. So we work with a lot of different vendors. Mm -hmm. um, we have a second page that is specifically for discounts on books and supplies. <clears throat> and this page, <clears throat> a lot of these um, discounts are granted yearly. So as you scan through this page, you might see a few at the moment that still say this is for 2023, but Susan is working with each of these vendors to get the updated discounts. 
Um, but if you're looking for um, barcodes, if you're looking for uh, different products through Demco, you can come to this page and find the Nebraska discount. Um, if you're looking for books, you might want to check out the two um, distributors that we have on the two big distributors that we have on this page, Baker and Taylor and um, Ingram, because you might get a bigger discount through them with the Nebraska code as opposed to going through even Amazon. Sometimes you get do get a better discount. So you might want to check this check out the options here. Our third discounts page is for conferences. Oh before I go on, let me say one more thing. Um, with the uh, discounts page the, for the uh, databases and e-resources, we do offer trials every once in a while when a vendor is offering a new product or has offered us a, a new discount on a product either way. Um, and we have a mailing list called Trial, and I'll show you later on how to get to that, how to sign up for the mailing list. But if you sign up for the Trial mailing list, you'll get a notice when um, we are running any of those trials. <clears throat> so conferences, um, an announcement does go out over the general library system mailing lists when we do have a, a discount for the conferences. And I'll mention about that trials mailing list. It's you know, some people are very um, are worried about getting too much email <laughs> and uh -huh. being inundated with things. And I can tell you, it's not like every day or anything. No, no it's like um, no. once a month, maybe well, or even less often. With the, it's with the trials, with the trials, and generally we try to run um, the subscriptions for the services mm -hmm. from either. July through June or January through December, so it's not. Yeah. You're not. You can't always subscribe every. You know, any time of the year, but um, we generally, generally, so we generally run trials in the spring or in the fall, so that you either um, start a new subscription in July or you start a new subscription in January. So there aren't a, a huge number coming out on that list. You know. Another service that the Library Commission pays for completely for all um, legal public libraries is the movie site license. Um, that allows libraries to show movies, certain movies within the library at no cost. They can do a public performance of those movies. This page and you'll notice the URL is up at the top, but this page does answer a lot of the frequently asked questions about what you can and cannot show with those licenses or how to get special permission to do um, something that falls outside the license. Those licenses are mailed out yearly with the summer reading program materials, so they did just recently go out for the 2024 year. If you have questions, Susan Nisley is the coordinator for that. We also um, coordinate <laughs> the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries Consortium. Um, you may recognize this, this page, which some of our patrons still use. Um, other patrons are using the Libby app, and this is how how the Libby app works. We currently have 194 libraries that are part of this consortium. We collect money from them yearly to pay for new content that goes into the collection. The Library Commission also contributes um, funds towards purchasing materials from two diff three different <laughs> pots of money. Um, we know we um, worked with the state legislature to get funding that's called Nebraska E-Reads, which goes into um, the monies to purchase materials. We also use some federal funds to purchase materials. 
So I juggle the budget. <laughs> um, Susan handles a lot of the tech support. Um, and we, we have found it to be um, a highly used service. Mm -hmm. um, there were over 1.4 million checkouts in 2024. Um, and I'm sorry, 2023, 2023. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, wow, we're we're <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I was just looking at numbers this morning again, and um, it well, we broke uh, our daily uh record on the 2nd of January, <laughs> we had over 5,000 checkouts in one, in one day. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're on track already this month to uh, have over 120,000 checkouts just for this month. So, so it's a very popular service. So, in addition to the two public facing um, sites, we do have a resource site for librarians. And this is the main page where you can um, get to the pages where it shows you which libraries currently participate. It, you can get to inform, information on how to join the consortium. You can find um, monthly reports. We do a ton of statistics. And we also I, <laughs> provide um, the numbers that are pre-filled in the bibliostat for circulation and holdings and, and all those types of things. And if you'll notice the last link on this page, the help and FAQs for library staff and users, this is something new that we did last year. We do get certain questions over and over again on like, for example, um, why don't you have every single book in a series? Well, staff can go to that page and say here patron this is why we don't have every single we can we just can't keep every single title in the series so resources for librarians on this page another service that we provide is nebraska memories we provide the platform through oclc to house um, digital uh, images of different historical materials from a number of different institutions around the state. We work with, uh, we have worked with public libraries, schools, museums, historical societies, um, universities, uh, just a variety of different institutions to digitize materials such as photographs, negatives, postcards, documents, maps, a number of different things, anything that's related to Nebraska history. Um, we will help them uh, digitize materials. We will digitize some materials for them to get them started on a project if they would like. We help them create the records that describe the items. Does, um, does something need to be old of a certain age before um, it can be in there? Like, it can't be like, you know, last right. year's yearbook or something. It, I mean, is it <clears throat> the... We ask that it be pre-1972, but we do have some, a few newer items than that, but we do ask pre-1972. And they do have to have um, either they have to own the copyright mm -hmm. or they have to have copyright permission oh, right. to uh to provide anything past 1923. Mm -hmm. okay anything before that's in public domain but if it's after 1923 they have to own the copyright information so previous page showed you the public um, site where people can get in and search or browse materials this is um, the site where pe institution, people from institutions can go to find out how to participate um, in Nebraska Memories. And there's also information on best practices in scanning if they want to do their own uh, digitization projects. OK. <clears throat> Tech kits. Amanda 
um, is our technology innovations librarian. And she thought it would be really useful for libraries to have the opportunity to check out equipment and different types of technology to um, try out with their patrons before they invest their own funds in a lot of these different things. So you can see a list there of the majority of items that we currently have. And you'll notice um, we have 12 to 15 copies um, for kids uh, for each of these different types of things. If you, I take it back. Robots, we have eight. Up to eight items can be checked out at a time. But we have drones, we have um, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, the robots, just a variety of different things that you can check out, request, and then use with your patrons. We do generally um, have a 30-day checkout uh, period. That does not include time that we put in at the beginning and the end for shipping. Um, we do ship them, or you, if you're close to Lincoln, you can come in and pick them up and, and return them in person if you would like. For each of the items, Amanda has put together information about the item, uh, the age group that it's appropriate for, resources on what you can do with this particular item, and then also some lesson plans and things like that. So you don't just get the item and then have to figure out what to do with it. Uh, Amanda has put together information so that you can, the, the library staff can learn how to use it themselves first and then have um, ideas of how to use it with their patrons. Okay. Um, Amanda, and I didn't actually do screens for these, um, Amanda also monthly does the pretty sweet tech talk on Encampus Live. That's the last Wednesday of the month generally. Yeah. And then um, another one that I, last minute, sorry, uh, I forgot to put in. Uh, another project that she works on is the Nebraska Libraries on the Web project, okay. which we provide um, a WordPress website for public libraries if they would like. And the URL for that is just libraries.nebraska.gov if you if anyone is interested in um, participating. I, I didn't the um the pretty sweet tech the, the tech kits last month's pretty sweet tech at the end of December was about the tech kits too. Tech these yeah. um new ones that are these you want a lot more you want to know more in depth about these that you can borrow, um watch the recording of December's um pretty sweet tech pretty sweet and tech. live. Yeah, yeah. Did you have that? Yes. Um, okay, cataloging. Uh, as Krista mentioned earlier, we do have the basic skills class, and there is an introduction to cataloging as one of those required courses. Beyond that, we offer a cataloging certification program. There's a basic certificate level and an and an advanced certificate level if anyone is interested in taking additional classes on, on cataloging. Um, some of the most of the classes are offered through Moodle. Some of them are um, uh, self-paced. Some of them uh, are scheduled at a specific time period. And just two more here. Um, I'll just mention quickly, um, we do encourage sharing amongst our libraries and a number of libraries who catalog their materials through OCLC do also use OCLC for interlibrary loan. And some of our libraries who are part of the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries Consortium have purchased their own copies of items and also share those with patrons from other libraries. So the Library Commission to acknowledge that and help out a little bit um, with the funding of those uh, services, we do offer lender compensation. 
and uh, this page talks a bit about that. And the last thing that I wanted to mention, I talked a little bit about mailing lists. Um, we do have a page that lists all of the mailing lists from the Library Commission. So uh, one of the service group discount services that we offer is a Cat Express uh, group service, and we do have a mailing list for that. We have a mailing list for the Nebraska Overdrive group, um, but all of the mailing lists for the Library Commission are available on this particular page. So that's it for me. Did you, you have? Uh, whoops, I did something, sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, pop that back up. Yeah. Um, and actually, we'll um, hop back to that mailing list page because I should mention um, something I didn't mention myself is um, you will see here, uh, there's one that talked about it, it says list called systems. And then um, the very bottom, you can see the beginning one that says uh, CPS, Essential Plains Library System. We have four regional library systems in the state, which are kind of like um, outreach of the commission. They're their own independent entities, and they are kind of, I also think of them as our like boots on the ground people <laughs> um, that, that um, help libraries with, they do training and they come and help you and, and will work with you as consultants. Um, and uh, if you look on the Let's, the over here there's a link to the regional systems and it pops out to the pages for each of them on that file menu there. But they each have their own mailing list too that they all post to. So if you are in a particular region of the state, you should get signed up for your um, library systems regional mailing list because then you'll get you'll get notifications from your system about things they're doing and then we post to them this as well using this what they call, I think it's called a super group or super mailing list called systems where we send things out to all the system mailing lists. There's not, there is not an NLC mailing list. There's not a library commission mailing list. There is four regional systems that we send a lot of general stuff out. And then there's the specific ones for um, Cat Express for trial. Um, there's an E-rate one as well, um, if you're looking for E-rate related notifications. So um, I definitely recommend um, signing up for whichever one of these would be um, most useful and appropriate for you. All right, so yes. Um, so does anybody have any questions? There's one up there we're gonna get to here. Um, that is a link there um, to, oh, I didn't update that. I have to update that link, that's old. <laughs> um, but there will be a link there when I do these slides to where we have all of our staff lists so you can find all of the phone numbers and email addresses for anyone in any department you wanna to talk to. And it's our 800 number here at the commission. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to add that they thought about when we're sitting here while I go over here and check out what this uh, question is we have? Oh, that's really nice up here. Oh, oh, it's a comment. Okay, it's not really a question, but it's a comment. Um, you were talking about um how the oh, it says I got it says increased weather yes. related checkouts when you're homebound? Question mark. Yeah, is that probably why? Um, the, the, actually, the um, checkouts. Yeah, yeah, I. And that's one of the reasons I was looking this morning to see what the checkouts were yesterday. And it actually was um, number two for the month. <laughs> uh, January 2nd was our highest, uh, but ye yesterday wow. was the second highest. Really? And, so Mon even it wasn't and that <laughs> Monday was the fourth highest. Wow. Because yeah. I think it was April or January 3rd was the third highest. So mm -hmm. holidays and weather related. Sure. It goes holidays. Up. That's what I was thinking too, because people may still, I know we only have extended their holiday break possibly in the beginning of January. Yeah. People were lucky enough to do that. Yeah. All right. Um, does anybody have any, any questions? Anything you wanted to know about about the commission that we haven't covered? Anything that was confusing you want to know, um, learn more about? Um, anything you were hoping we would mention that we didn't? 
um, but we can talk about things that we're all involved in and try to answer questions from other departments if they know <laughs> the answer. Uh, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. It just hit 11 o'clock, 11.01 here, but we started a little late, so that's fine. And we'll have plenty of time for anybody who has any questions. Um, while I'm waiting to see if we do have any, I am going to switch off here and bring up our mission website. Mm -hmm. oh. um, anything you want? We've got some thank yous coming in. Thank you, NLC staff. You're welcome. Um, there's a lot of thank yous coming. We hope this is useful. Like I said, we've had for some reason the last year or so lots of requests for tell us about what you do. Um, and we wanted to redo it too. So hopefully um, this will be helpful. A lot of the links we mentioned are here on the commission website. Our main website URL is nlc.nebraska.gov. Um, you can get here. You can search for anything you want to. We've got flyout menus for a lot of the things we talked about this week and last week that you can pop over to if you want to. Um, learn more. All right. I don't see any of the desperate questions, so I am going to wrap it up here today, and I'm going to go over here and use our flyout menu for education and training to get to my Encompass Live website. That is one way to get to it for the show. You can also use your search engine of choice and just type in Encompass Live. Um, so far, we are the only thing called that on the internet. No one else is allowed to use the name. <laughs> I haven't copyrighted or trademarked it or anything, whatever you need to do. Um, but our page comes up and our archive page comes up. Perfect. <laughs> um, so this will bring us to our main, bring you to our main page. Um, these are our upcoming shows we have coming over the next um, couple of months. Um, um, we do have a Facebook page, as um, Tessa mentioned. Um, if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We do reminders. You're reminded to log, to log in today's show when the previous um, recording is made available. Um, this is about other things going on. Uh, so if you'd like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Or we use the hashtag, the hashtag Encump Live, a little abbreviation of our show name when we post things on uh, Twitter and Instagram. So you can also look for those um, hashtags there to keep an eye on what's going on with our show. So these are upcoming shows, but I did want to show you our archive list is underneath there, a link to the archives. The most recent ones are at the top of the page. There is last week's Meet the NLC Part 1, so you can go ahead and watch that recording and see the slides for that. Um, this show is being recorded. It will be posted and up here by the end of the day tomorrow, along with, uh, with a link to the slides. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's all available. Um, and then I'll push it out on our social media as well. Um, Here in our show archives, I wanted to show you there is a search feature. So if you want to know if we've done some, a topic on a, uh, a show on a particular topic, you can search for that. Um, as I said, we premiered in January 2009, and this is our full show archive. So you do have a, a, a filter here. You can do the full show archive, search everything going back to the beginning, or you can just limit it to the most recent 12 months if you just want some current information. Um, and that's very important because, as I said, this is our full show archive going back to the beginning. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down because that's just would be crazy. But um, so everything is here, everything is out on our YouTube channel. But some things um, will stand the test of time, It'd be great things. You can still watch the recordings and get good information. But some things will become old and outdated. Resources may change drastically or no longer exist anymore. Um, links may be broken. Uh, people may work in different places than when they presented for us. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date of everything you watch on here. Everything has a date, so you know when it was first done. And you know that information is actually from that date. So this one here is from 2018. Um, so just pay attention to that when you are watching any of our old, older shows. But this is something we do as libraries and librarians. We keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have a paid place to have them um, hold them, which right now is our um, YouTube channel, we always have them available out there. I'll just keep adding to it. Like I said, we have over 730-something shows. I'm not sure of the exact number. I can't believe we said that I forget now. <laughs> But it's a lot. Yeah. Um, we do a show pretty much every week, every week of the year. Um, we've always taken off the year of a Nebraska Library Association annual conference. So there's always been just 51 weeks. Um, but some years there have been, um, you'll notice there's fewer technical issues, people 
couldn't make it on the last minute illness, whatnot. So you'll notice that not every year has a full 51, but that's why you can't, it's not the big a number you might think, there's a few here and there we missed. We try to do it every week we can. So that wraps up for today's show. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you all for joining me and talking about what we do here. Uh, it was helpful to everyone. Um, I hope you join us on um, one of our future episodes. And next week, we're going to be talking about auditing library websites. Uh, Laura Solomon is in the Ohio Public Library Information Network. She's going to be here with us. I'm not going to be here. She's going to come here remotely. <laughs> we do not make people travel across the country to come here. That's the beauty of this show, being online in a webinar. Nobody has to travel to join us. They can just come in remotely. So she's going to join us remotely to talk about um, evaluating your library website. Doesn't need updating. Um, navigation, uh, user interface, all those kind of things. So if you're wondering, how is our website doing? Is it good? Is it bad? Should we fix something? Change something? This will be a show to you. So please do sign up for that one and any other other of our other shows we have coming up. Um, um, pretty Sweet Text, as um, Deborah mentioned, the last Wednesday of each month are listed on here. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from, I don't know exactly what Amanda's topic is going to be, but I'm going to get back from her and we'll get this updated for you quickly so you know what she'll be talking about. But you can always sign up anyways, um, just to see where it is. If you are a techie person or just interested in, in tech, that's definitely what we talk about. And I talked about um, Sally's, sale, Sally's um, reading list she does. The week after next is her teen reads of 2023, um, teen-related books that she has um, read or found. Um, she already had done the children's one, Best in Children's Books of 2023, she did back in November. So those are two kind of uh, companion shows that she does, teen books and children's books. And she did one for the summer reading program, too, book titles that might be good for summer reading. So you can watch that one as well. So that wraps it up. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you on future episodes of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.